back in Glasgow briefly, so everything's going to sound and look a little bit different, uh, and I'm just uh, filming where I can. So not a comfortable position to film either, but not to worry. This is a uh, an ever-ready rechargeable cob work light that I, I got one of these and took it to the man. I was going to take it to bits in a video. I was in BM Home Stores and I came over here. It had been reduced from £15 to £5. So if you're near BM Home Stores, noting that I get the last two off the shelf in Shollins, uh, they've got these in and they look pretty good actually. It's based on another uh, style of lamp I've already taken apart, but this one seems a better implementation. Now they don't tell you they don't specify a power rating, which is good. The other ones that try to say they're 10 watt, because they've got a 10 watt style LED, uh, they are usually misleading. This one doesn't do anything like that. So uh, it comes with a charger, a mains charger and a vehicle charger. So let's, uh, well, I'll turn it on. It's nice and bright, it's very useful. And it's the one with the plastic case with the heat sink on the back here. And it's got an unusual bracket here coloured by a miscoloured bracket, which is very hard to open up. Hold on, I'm just going to try and uh, hinge that apart. It really is quite... there we go. And it folds apart so you can actually place it and actually aim it like this. So it's quite a, quite a handy little light. It's got a little uh, waterproof cover over the switch, which is good. And it's also got the little uh, rubber cover that goes over the charging port. It's notable that uh, it does seem to have protection because when you charge it, well I presume it's got protection, this charger rather decisively because it came pretty much fully charged. This one goes from the red charging mode, it suddenly and decisively switches to green. It doesn't do that sort of soft fade that some of the other ones do. So let's open it up. That's what we do. Let's make sure everything's still working. I'll just get into better position here. And the audio will change accordingly because I'm changing position relative to the camera. I don't know, I've been looking at some of the more recent videos. I'm not sure if it's just the playback or if the videos have been actually a wee bit jumpy. The, I think I'm going to have to upgrade to a different phone for recording my videos. Seem, stuff seems to have been going wrong with the, all the Moto G4 uh, phones. I think the upgrade has had some rogue input. So four screws, one in each corner, which are quite tight into the plastic. It probably doesn't help that I'm using my universal screwdriver. I'm already seeing something interesting here. There's a goop down the side of that. The other one that I took apart of these, the one from China, uh, this it turned out this aluminium heatsink was just pressed in. It was screwed in, but it wasn't sealed in any way. This looks like it may be sealed. So the front cover comes off. The glass comes off. We've got three screws holding the reflector on. I was intending to use my uh, Wiley Fox Swift camera to film this particular video, but it does not handle these fluorescent tubes well. It, even with all the settings for anti-banding, it just not doesn't deal with the flicker from traditional fluorescent lights. So that uh, ruled that out. It's going to be a very, very flickery video. Reflector comes out revealing. It reveals the lithium cell at the bottom, which is marked 2,200 milliamp power. It reveals a 5 watt, 1 ohm resistor, which is very common. And then the LED itself, and yeah, it's all gooped round the side, so that has physically been glued on, so that should be pretty waterproof, actually. That's all right, that's quite good. Um, what sort of current is flowing? Now, this is fully charged. Hold on, I'm going to grab a meter. Let's bring in the super tiny dinky meter, the ego meter, and measure the voltage, which I'm going to set it to the 200, 2000 millivolt set, and that's uh, two volts, and I'm going to turn this on, which is going to dazzle, and I'm going to measure the voltage across that resistor, making sure the probe is in the right position. Nine and a thirty-five millivolts. That's actually um, power equals current times. Uh, should I say that I equals? 
Let's, let's try that again. I equals V over R, which is the 930 millivolts, divided by the 1 means it's, it's just about an amp. And I'm guessing the voltage across this LED will be in the region, I can't see anything here, in the region of about 3 volts, which means that that means, yeah, 2.97 volts. Uh, it's a 3 watt light at full, full charge, but that will gradually go down as it discharges. Okay, that's a very good start. The battery looks as though it's gooped in, it's stuck in as well. Uh, that's quite annoying when they do that because it makes it hard to change. The other one of these I looked at had enough room under the reflector you could have actually stuck another cell in here on top and put them in parallel. That would have extended its runtime considerably or let you run it a bit brighter. I'm pretty sure the other one, uh, did I modify that? Did I end up putting a 3 watt LED in here instead, just a standard 3 watt emitter, because uh, it's effectively running it as 1 watt, it's got a parallel array of LEDs in this uh, module, but it's only running it at 1 amp um, at the 3 volt, so you could get a standard 3 watt LED and put it in, and you could change the resistor, you could adjust it to, to whatever you wanted. Um, to adjust the power rating now, I'd like to open this and see what sort of quality this is inside, but it's well sealed and I've not got much here, my vice of knowledge is on the Isle of Man at the moment, so I'm going to have to use something else. I'm just going to pause momentarily and see if I can bust this open. Pipe grips, the perfect tool for busting stuff open. Uh, so this circuit board hooks under uh, a little latch here, a little ledge, and pushes against these contacts. There's a sticky goo in the back of that, I'm not sure what that's for. Um, the supply comes onto these two pads here. One of them goes straight to the direct far, the other one goes via a 10 ohm resistor. Uh, that goes to this uh, capacitor here. Let's see if I can stay in shot here. Yes, yes, I'm staying in shot. That goes to uh, this capacitor here, then through an inductor, and then this capacitor, so there's a bit of filtering. Things notable here. The two class Y capacitors here in series giving extremely good electrical separation. This is a well-rated component. This is a, this is very good. Uh, there's a little switch mode chip. There's the snubber network across the primary. There's the diode feeding the bootstrap capacitor that powers the chip from the auxiliary winding. Very good separation with a slot. The output, the diode, actually has a capacitor and resistor across it. Uh, this chip, it turned out, was an LM358, which is a dual op amp. I think that's purely dealing with the change over the LED. It doesn't. There's no feedback from this side to that to regulate the voltage. I'm just going to make sure I'm still in shot here. Yes, I am. I've not gone completely out of shot. To limit the current output, there is a big fat resistor. Can't remember the value of that. Uh, you could probably see it. I can't. R050.05 ohms. Um, and that's more or less it. There's a voltage reference here, which has been used to uh, generate the sort of standard voltage reference. It's the 431, is it? Yes, the 431 voltage reference chip, just with its uh, in the mode. I think they've got the two pins shorted together, so it just produces a standard reference voltage. And then they've got dividers and resistors based on it to measure that. And that's more or less it. Uh, there does appear to be protection in the lithium's uh, battery in there itself. This puts out about 4.4 volts open circuit, uh, which is that tiny margin needed above the 4.2 to just allow it to do that sort of transition and also allow the uh, lithium battery itself to switch off when it's fully charged and also keep a modest flow of current right up to the point it is fully charged. The transformer has, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got the, uh, it's got the extended secondary side that it's extended out for the extra insulation, the separation. So it's, it's very good. In fact, you know what, it's worth buying these just for this little charger power supply because it is a sort of 4.2 volt output. It's also got uh, this car charging one, which I have not opened yet. Let's open it. This also claims to be... Oop, it's got a fuse inside that's a good start. Ow. So what do we have in here? We've got a big, fat inductor. Okay, uh, I'm just going to pause and check out where those chips are. One moment, please. Ah, interesting. So it's got some 
input filtering here, and this this picture's going all jerky again. Yeah, the Moto G R4 is playing up something rotten at the moment. That's since they did an update and suddenly everything's not working. Great. I think I'm going to have to look for a new recording device. So uh, you've got some filtering here. Then you've got a large inductor here. Uh, the picture's just stopped completely now. Then this is a XL Semi. I think it's an XL 4001E. Was what I think it was quite hard to read. And then this is just an LM358 again, so it's a dual op amp, which is just purely doing the LED to indicate when it is fully charged. And this thing is supposed to be able to handle 12 to 24 volts, so, it, you know, the two of these look like, almost like worth worth the money alone, because uh, it's actually quite a good light, particularly for the money, it's, it's very good. So yes, uh, now that this is going to all jump again, I think I shall stop. That's quite annoying, but... Uh, yeah, I quite like that. It's nicely made and it's got lots of potential.